we're going to be moving forward on that one uh, very soon. Uh, Eric and Pro Tim, do you have any announcement or correction on introduction? About 65, if I count right. <laughs> but uh, you know what I'll do today? I think I'll just go ahead and let's move forward. Okay, thanks. Uh, Please stand for the invocation from Dr. J. Wiltshire of the First Congressional Church and the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilwoman Orr. Thank you. Let us pray. God, we ask today that you might be with all present in this meeting. We first of all pray for the election of today and whatever the results, we ask that you would work through them for the greater good of education and our public safety servants uh, that they might be cared for and taken care of. And we pray your presence now in this meeting, and for these, your elected servants, we give you thanks for their willingness to serve in a very difficult capacity in the history of uh, Prescott at this time. And so we do pray for wisdom and direction to be given to them, that in their deliberations and decisions, they might be seasoned with justice and mercy and love. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Oberg? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Lamerson? Here. Councilman Blair? Yes. Councilman Lozell? Here. Councilwoman Orr? Here. Councilman Shiska? Here. And Councilwoman Wilcox? Here. All present. Thank you. Uh, City Manager, I think you have one announcement. I do indeed, Mayor. Uh, Mayor and Council uh, have been advised of interest in discussing the current City Council meeting schedule, which has been in effect since February. Uh, accordingly, Mayor, with your approval, uh, we'll place an item on the June 7th, 7th agenda for that purpose, for that discussion. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on to proclamations. Um. Proclamations A, proclaiming May 2016 as Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Month. Thank you. Come on up. Please stand right here. Well, this is proclaiming May 2016 as Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Month. Whereas today's society is finding more citizens involved in motorcycling on the roads of our country, I am one of them, <laughs> and whereas motorcyclists are roughly unprotected and therefore more prone to injury or death in the event of a crash than other vehicle drivers, and whereas it is the responsibility of all who put themselves behind the wheel to become aware of motorcyclists, regarding them with the same respect as any other vehicle traveling the highways of this country. And whereas it is the responsibility of the riders and motorists alike to obey all traffic laws and safety rules. And whereas all citizens of our community are urged to become aware of the inherent danger involved in operating a motorcycle and for riders and motorists alike to give each other the mutual respect they deserve. Now therefore, Harry Oberg, Mayor of Prescott, does hereby proclaim May 2016 as Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Month in Prescott and encourage all residents to do their part to increase safety and awareness in our community. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm Chairman of the Board for Motorcycle Riders Foundation out of Washington, D.C. It's awareness and education and we have a multitude of information on our website about safety and awareness and the governor um, also does this proclamation and all the states across the country do so we appreciate it thank you thank you very much thank you. <laughs> item b proclaiming may 15th through the 21st as national police week it won't sound as good as steve <laughs> You should just do all the proclamations, Steve. <clears throat> uh, proclamation for National Police Week, May 15th through the 21st, 2016. Whereas the Congress and President of the United States have designated the week of May 15th through the 21st, 2016 as National Police Week and May 15th as National Poli Peace Officers Memorial Day. And whereas the police officers 
of the City of Prescott play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of our citizens and visitors. And whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibility, hazards, and sacrifices that their law enforcement officers and the police officers recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the police officers of the City of Prescott have worked devotedly and selflessly to, on behalf of the uh, people of the city, regardless of the peril or hazard to themselves, and whereas their selflessness is shared by their families who willingly accept loved ones' absences on holidays and special occasions so that the community will be protected, and whereas these men and women, by their service and their dedicated efforts, have earned the recognition and gratitude of residents and visitors to our city. Now, therefore, Harry Oberg, Mayor of Prescott, do hereby recognize the week of May 15th through the 21st, 2016, National Police Week, and May, May 15th, 2016, as National Peace Officers Memorial Day. I would also like to take this moment to thank uh, Chief Reinhardt here for his service to our community. He's retiring next month. July. July. Okay. Congratulations and thank you. Appreciate it. Proclaiming May 2016 as Neurofibromatosis Awareness Month. You guys just want to stand right here? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. 2016 Neurofibromatosis Awareness Month and Neurofibromatosis Awareness Day. Whereas neurofibromatosis is a genetic disorder that can cause tumors to grow on nerves throughout the body. And whereas NF1 is the most common neurofibromatosis occurring in one, to two, one in 3,000 to 4,000 individuals in the United States. Whereas neurofibromatosis can lead to blindness, bone abnormalities, cancer, deafness, disfigurement, learning disabilities, and as well as excruciating and debilitating pain. And whereas it is important to ensure that persons living with neurofibromatosis have access to lifelong care and that the research for treatment of neurofibromatosis continues. Therefore, Harry Oberg, Mayor of Prescott, does hereby proclaim May 2016 as Neurofibromatosis Awareness Month and May 17 as 2016 as Neurofibromatosis Awareness Day. Tonight, the city of Prescott will light up the front of our building in the colors of green and blue to signify this day. And I'd like to introduce the Camachos. Thank you. We have Pat, Matthew, and Tony, right? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Pat Camacho. I want to thank I want to thank all our family and friends for being here. It's very very uh, important that we raise awareness for this disease. It can happen to anyone. So, I thank my hometown of Prescott for um, all the help that they've you know done and uh, in achieving this. It's a it's a great honor. I echo my wife's remarks, but I want to thank uh, the mayor of Prescott and all the council members for allowing this opportunity for us to raise awareness for the neurofibromatosis that my son has been suffering from birth. So I appreciate it. Thank you for my family and son and friends that supported us uh, throughout the years and continued support for all my, uh, my son's well-being. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before we move on to uh, presentations, we have one 
uh, order of business will take out of order. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, it was a request to have the liquor license item considered early on in the meeting. So um, item 3A is the public hearing in consideration of a person transfer liquor license application for a Series 9 liquor store license from Michael Francis Lewis, applicant for Mike's Mini Market, located at 924 East Gurley Street. Mayor and Council, this is a request. This is a request for a person transfer license for a Series 9 liquor store license. Um, the police department has reviewed the application and found it to be in compliance with state law. The application and license fees have been paid. The application has been posted at the proposed location for the 20 days and no public comments have been received. I believe the applicant is in attendance. Mr. Sim is the applicant here? Oh, he's right there. Yeah. Right yeah, over there. Come on up. <laughs> Why don't you take, us, uh, take a moment to uh, introduce yourself and tell us about your business. I don't know if my name was called or not. I just walked in. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, you, we just just started. My name is Mr. Samnani, and my brother and I just recently acquired Mike's Mini Market on Gurley Street. Started on April 1st. Submitted our transfer of liquor license to... Department of Liquor, Arizona. And I'm here to present on behalf of my brother and Mike's Mini Market to share how delightful we are that we are serving the community neighborhood uh, with some fine wine, liquor, and other convenience store items. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. You're welcome. Do you have a motion? Mayor, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second vote, please. Passes unanimously. Do you have a second motion? Mayor, I move to approve uh, for liquor license application number 09130036 for a Series 9 liquor store license for Mike's Mini Market located at 924 East Curley. Second. Okay, I have a, <coughs> a motion and second. Uh, may I have a comment, please? Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Samnati, this uh, mini market is pretty close to my home, so I see a lot of what goes on there. And um, it's only 370 feet from an elementary school, which is just beyond the 300 foot requirement. And there are 60 sober living homes within a mile radius of this store. Now, that doesn't prevent you from getting the license. And I'm not going to put you out of business in any way, but I think as a business owner, you have a responsibility <coughs> to remember responsible sales. And um, there's, there, the customers who may come to your store are probably not the ones who should be buying liquor. <laughs> That's all I have to say, just asking you to be responsible. Thank you so much for your comment. Okay, any other discussion before we vote? Okay, vote please. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, th thank, you. thank you. Appreciate you coming. Okay, we'll go back to our presentation now. First presentation. Presentation by Pamela Persall, Yavapai County Assessor regarding Taxpayer Education Property Tax Assistance Program. <coughs> Hi, I'm Pam Pearsall, your Yavapai County Assessor. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to make this presentation. I wanted to remind your constituents that there are some programs that some people qualify for to help them with property taxes. We sent out a press release, but every year we send out a press release, and then when we sign up new people, I hear, well, I could have qualified for this last year. Why didn't I know about it? So this year, we're really going out to all the town councils to try to, to enlighten your constituents. The first program is a widower's or a disability exemption. So what it takes to qualify is you need to be a widower. And that means that in Arizona, you were a resident and your spouse died. So if you lived in Florida and your spouse died and you moved to Arizona, you do not qualify for this program. It's for residents of Arizona. You can be in Florida on vacation and have your spouse pass away, but you have to be a resident of Arizona. And there's, there's a um, qualification for income, and it is $31,528.
So if you make less than that, and your home is worth less than $257,000, the limited property value. So the, the taxable value is less than that, you can qualify. Any questions, please call our office or come in and apply. And again, this is a disability exemption or a widower's exemption. And what that means is that they take $200 to $300. It depends on the math of what the value of your property is and how much you make. But it typically is between two to $300. They credit that on your taxes. So if you live in a humble manufactured home and your taxes are not that much, they take the balance and they give it to DMV for your car tax. So it's a very good program for people that are disabled or widowers. And to be disabled, it's a permanent disability and there's a form that your doctor fills out. So some people come to us and they say, well, I'm only 85% disabled or 95% disabled, do I qualify? We don't care how much, it needs to be permanent and your doctor just says that it's permanent and complete and fills out this paperwork for us. The due date to file this has been extended to July 15th. Typically, it would already have passed your deadline, but we've extended it to make it, if we can get it to DMV, I mean to Department of Revenue in time, we want you to have it. So please, if you know anybody that qualifies, please let them know to come and apply for that. There's another program and it's called a senior freeze. Let me just ask you, was there any limitations on income for the dis disabled? For the disability one, it's $31,528 is the maximum. Okay. And if you think you're close, please call us because uh, some income may not qualify and we can help you with the math. The second one is called a senior freeze or senior property protection program. And what that does is it freezes your taxable value. Well, now when the market's going up, that would save you in property taxes. If the market was going down, it's not a good program. It freezes that taxable value for three years, and then in three years, if nothing's changed, we just continue to freeze that taxable value. And if you remember, we passed something called Prop 117, which means your taxable value can go up a maximum of 5% per year. So if you're on this program and your property values don't go up, then you're gonna save money on your taxes. This also has an income qualifier, and it is 35,184 if there's one property owner and 43,980 if there's two property owners. You can have any value of home. It's just the income qualifier. And this you have until September 1st to qualify. And one thing that I discovered at the home show is a lot of people didn't realize that you can qualify for the senior freeze and a disability exemption. You can actually qualify for both. So just because you're on one program doesn't mean you can't qualify for the other. We have paperwork. If anybody didn't memorize everything I told you, we can hand that out to you. Would you be interested in the, in the stuff I have? Otherwise, I'm done. So thank you so much for your time. Okay, any questions or comments from the council? Okay, thank you, Pam. Thank you Appreciate so much. It. Thank you. Yeah. Next presentation. Item B, presentation by Dr. Frank Ayers regarding campus and curriculum development at Emory-Riddle Aeronautical University. Thank you. Well, Mayor, Council, thank you. Uh, I think it's been about uh, two and a half years since I appeared before the Council, and uh, Mayor Oberg uh, graciously uh, offered an invitation to come and update you on where your university is going. And I use that... Uh, term explicitly. Uh, there are wonderful universities in this state. I understand there's a couple in the southern part and uh, one up north that's a great university. Uh, uh, but this one's in your city and this is your university. Uh, I'll start out with a slide beh behind you or I guess on the screen you can see. Uh, this picture was taken Saturday night. A little current events. Your uh, Embryo Golden Eagles flight team uh, scored their 10th national championship. Uh, that makes them the winningest of the last 20 years, if you add that up every other year they win. But what's more interesting about that, uh, look who is coming to Prescott to study at our university. The young lady on the far left is named Bella Bataleg. She's from Mongolia. She travels here, she's a sophomore, and she traveled to Prescott, Arizona to study at this prestigious institution. 
And in competition, she was the number one out of over 150 students competing in an event called computer accuracy. Uh, we call that math. And uh, that's the kind of young people that our university is bringing to this city. And I think you see that when you go around town. You see the quality of the young people we have and the quality of our faculty and the quality of our staff. And you see that in, in how they are involved. I'd also like to thank the council for your involvement in our university. If I look around, I see all the faces. I've seen all of you at some of our events. Uh, Councilwoman Moore was at uh, graduation a couple days ago. And it's just great to have you all involved with our university as, as it grows. Another picture of the competition here. We have to buy uh, Sam there a new hat because it's missing a date on it. <laughs> our campus is growing. Uh, these three young engineers are part of our most recent graduating class, the largest in our history. Uh, this year we will, between fall and spring graduation, and our graduations are split because 40% of our students are engineers and they take between four and a half and five years to graduate. We'll graduate almost 500 students. The the last time I came before you, we had an, an enrollment of 1,700. Uh, this next fall coming up, we'll have almost 2,400 students on campus. So that'll be almost 40% growth in four years. Now, along the way, you might ask, well, how do you do that and maintain quality? Actually, we've increased quality of our students. And so this is, once again, uh, for the, about the last 15 years, the brightest group of young people gathered together in the state of Arizona to attend a university highest grade points, highest SATs. Uh, they're all in Bachelor of Science programs. Uh, we do not have Bachelor of Arts programs, of which I'm a graduate, but these are all math whizzes. These are all math and physics whizzes, and so they're great kids. These young people here, the young lady on the far right, Morgan Cherry, was offered, I think, two jobs her, the first day of her senior year. And when we looked around our graduating class, uh, 65 to 70 percent of them already have jobs and the rest will be finding out fairly shortly. Our placement rate in their field of study within a year of graduation is 95%. Now, anyone want to venture what the national average is for that number? It's about 30%. So our young people that we're bringing to this city are pretty amazing. Along the way, though, we have some challenges, and we've appreciated your help as we have grown with them. Uh, we are about to finish the Thumb Butte Apartments, which is our latest uh, uh, residence hall, I had a privilege of walking through those today, and that's about 264 beds and a beautiful, uh, on top of a beautiful hill on the southern end of the campus, which if luxury homes were there would probably be pretty expensive lots. So we're going to have some young people living in some amazing places. We had completed last, this fall, a new uh, athletic center upgrade, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. We're right now under construction. It started about a month and a half ago on the Prescott Area STEM Education Center. And why do we call it the Prescott Area STEM Education Center? Well, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And once complete, next summer, we will open this facility up to all the high school and middle school students and elementary school students, if they desire, in our city once a week to bring about 100 students out to our campus to sit in our planetarium and to explore the origins of the universe and work in our laboratories and build robots and all, all the neat things that young people do. We currently do that about three times a year right now, a program called Women's Rocket Day in Science. Um, the young men have already said, why not us? And so next <laughs> fall, we will have young men and young women's Rocket Day in Science for our students and we are very engaged with the local uh, high schools and middle schools, but this is our way of paying back the community. So one day a week we'll open this up, and we hope that every student will get a chance to see what uh, these kind of careers in engineering, in security intelligence, in aviation, in space physics, uh, in business, the kind of careers, and, and of course in aviation, the kind of careers they can be a part of, and will inspire them to uh, maybe reach out beyond who, who they think they can be to who they really can be. And so we're excited about that. Our next project, it says fall 2018, it's probably fall 2018 or 2019 as a second residence hall because we continue to grow. And uh, <clears throat> that'll be followed by other uh, uh, structures as needed. But as you can see, our university is growing and the university campus here has the full support of our board of trustees. And um, they're excited about growing our university in Prescott, Arizona. 
Um, we've been told several times by our board chair, uh, Mr. Mori Husseini, that this is where our university has room to grow now. We have about 350 acres and we occupy about 95 of it right now. So we will continue to grow in this city and, uh, and we also are very proud of being a, a large part of the city as well. And uh, I'd like to thank the council uh, from the first, I've been here now almost seven years. First year we were here, the first project that the council helped us with was putting lights out on Willow Creek, which allowed our students to walk down to the store at night and not in danger of their lives. And uh, relentlessly the city has been there when we needed them and hopefully we've been there for the city when the city's needed us. And we wanna keep making that partnership grow. A couple lighter things that are going on right now. Uh, Researchers on our campus uh, were involved, if you saw the newspaper stories, with the uh, gravitational wave experiment, which looks like it's headed toward a Nobel Prize candidate, uh, candidacy. And uh, uh, Michaeli Zanlin there in the center, and uh, Brent and uh, our professors are just uh, pretty amazing. Uh, Brent and Huey uh, are pretty amazing folks. This is the quality of faculty member we're bringing to the city, PhDs in space physics and astronautics who are doing cutting edge work. More than that, students, undergraduate students, are getting to do amazing things. We have a sophomore now, a young lady named Jasmine Gill, who's already published four papers in the area of uh, gravitational wave research, spent the last summer in Europe, her freshman summer, interning, and this summer at Caltech, a little school in California. So that's the kind of young people that are going through our university right now. You might have noticed we uh, have expanded our athletic programs. Uh, we did just complete our athletic center. And if you add the construction up on the campus in the last three years, uh, going out to next summer, it's about $50 million that have been invested in the Prescott community by Amber Riddle. And that's also jobs because I think most recently we've had up to 200 people working on our residence hall. And uh, this is our third major structure, the STEM building. So we've created a lot of construction jobs in town. And uh, obviously each year as we grow, we're hiring more faculty and staff. So we're, I think we're contributing to the economy. Additionally, we have prof uh, one professor who brought his business here from Utah. He came to work at the university, but his business is located at the airport now. And so he's brought a business with him. And you'll see more of that that's the entrepreneurial side of universities now where the, the faculty have businesses and we really encourage that and that helps us. But our athletic programs have been conference champs now for two years. Um, how would you like to go to a university where the uh, fraternities, sororities, and athletes have a higher grade point average than the rest of the student body? <laughs> well, that's called Amber Riddle. And so these are incredibly bright young people. And in fact, our two golf teams are out at national competition right now and uh, pretty amazing folks. Uh, we were pleased to bring basketball back to town. We understand we have some uh, basketball over in Prescott Valley now, so Prescott has basketball and Prescott Valley has basketball. And we're bringing women's basketball uh, back this fall, and we're very excited about that. Uh, Becky Burke, our women's basketball coach, is a Final Four player uh, at Louisville, so we're excited to have a great coach and great young people. Our business students, uh, and I'd like to brag on them, compete against the other major universities in the state in something called Phi Beta Lambda competition. Our business department uh, uh, is probably smaller than the faculty at some of the universities we compete against, but for the 10th year in a row, we've swept state competition. We have the best young people, and uh, they work incredibly hard, and the results show for themselves. We are bringing a neat event to the city this summer, the Women's Air Race Classic, which is a race for 55 teams, all two women teams who will race from the campus here at Prescott, Arizona to our campus at Daytona Beach, Florida. And 18 to 21 June, we'll have a large community event, the send-off event, there's banquets, there's a variety of things that go with that, and we'll be bringing a large group of young women, amazing young women, these are our four competitors, and uh, who will be flying from here in an air race 25 miles across the country. And next fall in October, we'll be bringing one of the five Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association regional fly-ins to town. The city has made that effort, and we've been a big part of that. And that'll also bring people and attention to Prescott, Arizona, which is good. So a lot of good things going on. 
Um, I just close out by saying that was also taken Saturday night as well. My wife and I had the privilege of hanging out with these great young people in Columbus, Ohio, um, who had just won, found out about two minutes before this picture was taken, they'd won the national championship. Um, and when our young people win a national championship, they go off and celebrate by eating ice cream. <laughs> There's other ways to do that, but we, uh, we tend to be uh, uh, pretty straightforward about it. But I would tell you that our university is growing. We're very appreciative of what the city is doing for us. And we'd like to know if there's other ways that we can serve the university as well. I know our faculty and staff are very engaged in this city and excited to uh, be a part of the community. So uh, if we can help you in any way, let us know. And uh, uh, we appreciate the support. And we'll keep you informed as we keep going on as we grow uh, into the university we uh, intend to be over the next decade or two. Yeah. So thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Ayers, for your presentation and also everything you do for Prescott. And I want to know if anybody on the council has anything they would like to say. Well, I'd just like to say this leadership starts at the top. And we appreciate all you do and your wife for Prescott and serving on committees and leadership teams. And you've brought so much in addition to the university. So thank you. Well, well thanks. And I yeah. thank you on behalf of uh, about 400 faculty and staff who Pretty also amazing. were involved in so many things. Uh, in the city across the span from political life to our uh, right. hospital system there everywhere you look our people are really engaged and uh, that's that's, right. that's who we like to be so thank, thank you. you thank you well and we appreciate how you have implemented the aopa fly-in yeah. and uh, thank you very much because that's going to be a rock and good time yeah. oh we think it'll be great and of course john cox and uh, our friends over at uh, guidance uh, dave roy and others are really instrumental in making that happen we're glad to be here uh, it is of note that Katie Pribble, who's a member of our Alumni Hall of Fame, is the Senior Vice President for Communications for AOPA, and she helped them find Arizona. So that was good. <laughs> helped find her way back to Arizona. So, right. so thank you, Frank. Great. Appreciate thank it. You. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Dr. Okay, Harris. thank you very much. Appreciate the presentation. Okay, next presentation. Item C, presentation of customer service award winners for National Travel and Tourism Week. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to recognize the importance of tourism to our local economy and our state economy and our national economy. Uh, and also to recognize the people that make that make this happen. I think it's important to point out that one of the findings that came out of the uh, uh, NAU uh, tourism study, which was just completed a few months ago, is that the city of Prescott ranked at a 90% approval rate, uh, rating among visitors. And that doesn't happen by accident. Uh, that happens by hard work of people in this town. And I should also point out that that is the highest rating of any community in the state. Only one other community in the state has come close to that, and they didn't reach that level, and that was 25 years ago. Uh, so we have some really special people that, uh, that do some great work uh, day in and day out. But uh, I'd like to take the opportunity just to uh, uh, remind everyone in the community and, and uh, here as well, the importance of tourism just to our local economy. Uh, according to that uh, NAU study, it's a $267 million direct spending uh, every, in, in the course of one year. That was 2014 to 2015, which, is, which equates to a $340 million total economic impact, which is significant, generating $46 million in federal, state, and local taxes. So as part of National Travel and Tourism Week and Arizona Travel and Tourism Week, uh, we did a number of things to point out the importance of tourism, and we also ran a competition to recognize the hardworking people in the tourism industry here in Prescott. Uh, Fifteen people were nominated. Uh, not all of them could be here tonight, so we have three symbolic uh, winners that uh, we'll be recognizing uh, this evening. Debbie, there you are. <laughs> right here. Thank you. Mr. Raver Dunn. Awesome. And uh, our final representative for tonight is Allison White.
And as I said, these three represent the 15 winners and all of the people in the industry in Prescott to work day in and day out to, to make this industry successful and uh, keep, keep those visitors coming back. So thank you very much. Sorry, there were three other people that snuck in that I didn't know about. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Luann Mattis from All of You Naturally. Okay. Hang on just a second, because I didn't know you were here, so. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Consent agenda. Item A, approval of minutes for the City Council meetings held on May 3rd, 2016. I do have one correction to the study session minutes of May 3rd. On page one at the bottom, it states that Willow and Watson Lakes were purchased in 1978. They were actually purchased in 1998. So make that correct. With that, with approval, those changes will be made to the minutes. Item B, approval to apply for various fiscal year 2016-2017 grant opportunities for the fire department. Item C, approval to submit a grant application to the U.S. Department of Justice Bureau of Justice Assistance, requesting funding in the amount of $250,000 to plan and implement a justice and mental health um, collaboration program in association with West Yavapai Guidance Clinic. Item D, award of city contract number 2016-101 to energy savings, heating and cooling for heating, ventilation and air conditioning, preventive maintenance, repair and related services in an annual estimated amount of $35,000 facilities management fund. Item E, award of two unit price contracts for analytical testing services, city contract number 2016-288 to Test America Laboratories Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $65,000 and two city contract number 2016-289 to Bradshaw Mountain Environmental Incorporated in amount not to exceed $38,000. Dollars, water and wastewater funds. Item F, approval to perform night work at the Willow Creek Road Smoke Tree Lane <coughs> intersection in conjunction with the Smoke Tree Lane Water and Pavement Improvement Project. Item G, approval to perform night work on Willow Creek Road at Pioneer Parkway in conjunction with the Willow Creek Road Realignment Project. And item H, approval of purchase of a, purchase of a Conoco, Conoco a Minolta C754E copier from in FinCom in the amount of $15,798.82 and associated maintenance agreement using National Association of State Procurement Official Pricing. City contract number 2016-294, general fund with recovery cost recovery from various departments. Okay, do I have a motion? Mayor. I move, move to approve consent agenda items 1A through 1H. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second vote, please. Passes unanimously. Okay, move on to item two. Item two, liquor license consent agenda. On today's liquor license consent agenda, there are two applications for a Series 15 special event liquor license. July 4th, Fireworks, at the Boys and Girls Club of Central Arizona, located at Mile High Football Field, and the applicant is Stephen Randolph, Randolph Gottlieb. Gottlieb. 
Um, the date and time of the event liquor sales is Monday, July 4th from 10 a.m. to midnight. And item B is the National Day of the Cowboy Dance, Prescott Regulators and the Shady Ladies, 201 South Montezuma Street. Applicant Neil Thomas, date and time of event of liquor sales is July 23rd, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. The applications for these two events have determined to be in compliance with city requirements and are being recommended for approval. You do have a motion? Move to forward, Mayor, move to forward special event liquor license applications 2A and 2B to the Arizona State Liquor Board with a recommendation of approval. Second. You have a motion and second vote, please. Passes unanimously. Okay, your regular agenda. Regular agenda item two or three B, adoption of ordinance number four nine seven three dash one five one one and four nine seven four dash one five one two and resolutions number four three two five dash one five three four four three two six dash one five three five and four three two seven dash one five three six amending building fire building fire planning public works and water resource fees. Um, I'll read the title of the two ordinances. Ordinance number 4973-1511, an ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Prescott, Yavapai County, Arizona, amending typo, Title Three, Chapter 3-17, Section 3-17-2, Subsection 105.5. And ordinance number 4974-1512, an ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Prescott, Yavapai County, Arizona, amending Title Two, Chapter 2-1, Section 18J of the Prescott City Code. Mayor Pro Tim, you got a comment? Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> Just share with my fellow council that um, as liaison to PNZ, uh, this was forwarded through uh, the UDC process, et cetera, and um, it was uh, o o overwhelmingly unanimous, I guess that would be the proper word, uh, through both the UDC and PNZ to be forwarded to the council body as a whole. Thank you. Go ahead and start your presentation. Good evening, Mayor and Council. We're here tonight to talk about direction that council provided last year about adjusting our fees to get closer to cost recovery. As you may know, this process has been ongoing. It started last November. We've been working with contractors, developers, customers. We've done public meetings. We've done radio shows. We've done email blitzes. We have worked with the local design professionals. We did a city council presentation March 1st of this year. Since then, we've done another contractor's meeting. We did come to PNC and give a presentation there in April. We're here tonight um, to, for your consideration of adoption of the ordinances and uh, resolutions. We also have just came out of a 60-day um, comment period where we received no comments. And tonight, we're looking at the two ordinances and the three resolutions. The first ordinance basically uh, adjusts the administrative code to allow more flexibility and give more um, permit extensions if they're needed. The second ordinance is basically taking a fee out of a code and actually putting it in a fee resolution. The first resolution there is the building division fees. Second one is the fire department fees. Third one is planning and zoning, public works, and the water resource fees. There is staff here to answer any questions that you may have, and when you open the public, anything they may have. Questions, comments from the council? I just have a comment, Mayor. Uh, being part of the UDC, and a lot of work went into this, and thank you, Randy, and, and everybody, and even Tom. Thank you, Tom, <laughs> even though. Um, but you guys did a good job. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Any from the public? Step on up. <laughs> Tourist attractions. <bags>. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get a business license. <laughs> this has been a long day, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. I am here to support these resolution changes and fees. Uh, this team, Development Services, George, Randy, Henry, oh, don't let Henry hear this. Um, <laughs> Tom, uh, they did work hard and we had great outreach. We uh, were there for the community and 
this needs to be a unanimous vote. I think that some of these resolutions are going to make contractors really step up to the plate and become uh, more diligent with what they do in their inspections. So we're all very happy with this. Henry, close your ears. 100%. <laughs> so, and George, I mean, George spent hours with me, but we got through it and it was great. And again, this is a fabulous team that you have working in the city of Prescott. So, thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, any other uh, public comments? Well, it looks like this is going to be an easy night. Yeah. Do I have a motion? Mayor, I move to adopt ordinance number 4973-1511. Second. Do you have a motion second vote, please? Passes unanimously. Mayor, I move to adopt ordinance number 4974-1512. Second. Do you have a motion second vote, please? Passes unanimously. Mayor, I move to adopt resolution number 4325-1534. Second. I have a motion and a second vote, please. Passes unanimously. Mayor, I move to adopt resolution number 4326-1535. Second. I have a motion and a second vote, please. Just and kidding, Don. And <laughs> Mayor, <laughs> I move to adopt resolution number 4327-1536. Second. A yeah, motion to second vote, please. Mayor Ober, passes unanimously. Well, like I said, this is an easy night. That completes our, no, we still have one more thing. We've got to spend some money first, Mayor. Yeah. I missed that one. <laughs> Item C, please. Item 3C. Um, and when I read this, there has been a correction to the amount. Um, instead of awarding the contracting amount of $1,202,587, it should be in the amount of $1,030,448. Okay, so what? I'll what? Can you say that again? again? Instead of the amount of $1,202,587, they want to award the one contract. Million. Pardon? For one million. One million. What did I guess? Okay. You said one thousand. Yeah. <laughs> one, one million thirty thousand four hundred forty-eight. So. Okay. So we saved some money. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, item C is award of city contract number two zero one six two eight three to Fan Contracting Incorporated for construction of the Hummingbird Way and Sunrise Boulevard culvert replacement project, in the amount of one million thirty thousand four hundred forty-eight dollars. Right. Um, you have a Pike County Flood Control District and street funds. Thank you. Um, as uh, City Clerk mentioned, this is uh, for consideration of award of a construction contract to fan contracting uh, to replace uh, two culverts in Yavapai Hills. Uh, they were originally built in 1975, uh, and at the time they were built under the regulations uh, known at that time, uh, pre all the FEMA mapping, pre all the drainage calculations. Um, uh, 40 years ago. Uh, what highlighted uh, the culvert study in uh, summer of 13, the monsoon season, uh, resulted in uh, numerous uh, floods in the area, uh, which caused us to do some more uh, analysis and research. And uh, the studies determined that the two, the, these two culverts were undersized based on the calculations uh, given today's standards. And uh, the design of replacements uh, for those two culverts ensued. Uh, the design contract uh, was approved by your counts, council, and uh, we've been proceeding since that time. Uh, the uh, project uh, had uh, several uh, major design issues, being that these two culverts are, uh, would, need, uh, would need to require the road closure for the period of construction. Uh, the Hummingbird uh, cl uh, closure uh, will inconvenience a few residents uh, because there's uh, other roads that are very close. Uh, the closure of Sunrise will imp and impede quite a few uh, residents, uh, fire, police, etc. Uh, in knowing that uh, this process was going to be very disruptive, 
we've been working with the HOA and the residents to work out how we can do this, keep them informed. Uh, we also put into the contract that uh, the contractor had a maximum of 30 days to keep the road closed before they had to make it passable. We incorporated into the design a precast replacement uh, drainage structure to again uh, expedite the installation time and minimize the closure time. So we've done just about everything we can to minimize the disruption, but it, there will be disruption. So we will be continuing to coordinate with the HOA, keeping fire, police, emergency medical services uh, notified of the uh, closures uh, during the course of the project. Uh, the uh, project was uh, out to bid uh, starting in uh, April 3 and April 10 of this year. On April 21st, we received five bids, all above the engineer's estimate. Uh, we had no way of estimating what the uh, constraint would be, uh, imp the impact on the, uh, the bid. So uh, the, the low bid was for $1,030,448 with fan contracting. Uh, the confirmation of the bid was received from FAN. All the uh, appropriate uh, bid checks were done and everything was satisfactory, uh, responsive, and balanced. Uh, and looking at the project, we're looking at 90 total days for a construction process. There's a lot of pre-design and a pre-work that needs to happen prior to them cutting the road open, so we've tried to limit uh, the time on that to minimize the disruption. Looking at having notice to proceed next week, uh, to get the project moving because there's a lot of design uh, work, as I mentioned, completing uh, mid-August. Uh, and the funding is coming from about half from the uh, flood control district funds that we get and the other half from the street fund. So if there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Question, comments? Any uh, comments from the public? <laughs> this is going to be an easy night. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Mayor, I move to award city contract number 2016-283. Second. You have a motion, second vote, please. Mayor Albert. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Well, that completes our work for the day. Appreciate everybody coming, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Meeting adjourned.